All right, guys, Game Boy Zero Guide Part 1, where I'm going to show you how to turn this case into this. I'm going to show you uh, what all parts you need to drill out on the inside, what parts you need to make sure that you keep, how to add the extra buttons on the front and on the back, all that good stuff. So let's get started. Alright, so starting with the back, we need to remove most of the battery compartment, but we need to make sure that we save these two screw holes so that we can put it back together with the original screws. Alright, so now we're going to grind down both of these screw posts for our L and R buttons. So this is the tactile switch that I use for the L and the R buttons. Uh, you can tell when you've drilled these down far enough by just sticking it in there periodically and seeing if it sticks out the back at all. So we're not quite there yet. There we go. So now we need to widen our EXT port at the bottom just a little bit. Um, here's our USB port. And you can see once it gets to the bottom, it kind of just hits those angled parts. So basically we just need to turn those into right angles. Now on the other side, we just need to widen the power jack just a little bit for a micro USB port. So moving on to the front half of the case, easily the scariest part of the whole project in my opinion because you really don't want to mess it up. Um, to get the screen out you can just kind of push gently and it should come out pretty easily. So the screen we're going to be using is too wide to fit between these screw posts. Uh, so you need to take those out but you need to save them because essentially we're going to create a bracket that will go on top of the screen after we put it in so that we can still use the screw holes on the back side of the case. So what you can do is just gently grasp them with a, a pair of pliers and sort of rock them back and forth gently until they come loose. These two we're not actually going to use, um, but you should still try and take them off in one piece just in case you happen to mess up one of these ones. So now that that's done, we're going to be drumming out this whole recessed area right here to make room for our new screen. Uh, be really careful not to go too far or you're going to mess up your bezel here. Edges are still a little bit rough at this point, but we're about to go over it with a file and an X-Acto knife. So adding the X and Y buttons, easily the most nerve-wracking part of working on the case. Now this isn't the only way to do this, this is just how I did it. If you think of any better ways to do it, feel free to share it in the comments. Um, but here's what I did. Take your NES controller that you got your buttons out of and a piece of tracing paper. Put 
that on there like that. Now set it down on a flat surface and take a finely tipped pencil and then just trace over and over and over again around the circles. I measured on my first Game Boy Zero and the distance between the X and Y buttons and the A and B buttons are right at 0.6 centimeters. Um, you'll notice that these two buttons are quite aligned horizontally, but that's intentional because if these scoot over too far, then they'll start to run into the Game Boy logo and they'll start to run into some stuff on the inside. So just watch out for that. So once you've got it lined up and I measured and I've got it right at 0.6 centimeters uh, between the buttons. Uh, you just tape it down and take something hard and just rub your template there. That's why we wanted all that extra graphite on it. So now, once you're done with that, just peel it off. Now you can use these as templates while you're drilling your buttonholes. So first we're going to make a couple of pilot holes. I highly recommend starting from the back. That way if you slip off a little bit, you're not gonna scratch up the front. All right, so hopefully at this point, you've got some pretty good looking X and Y uh, buttonholes cut. Uh, you'll notice on the other side, there's this screw post here. We're gonna need to remove that so that we'll have room for our button pads. So that's about it for major modifications to the case and that's honestly one of the hardest parts of the whole project. We'll probably have a few things that we need to adjust here and there as we go along, uh, but yeah, that's about it. I hope this helps you guys get started on your own Game Boy Zero. Next time we'll be taking a look at how to wire into the original controls and hook them up to a Teensy and how to program that if you decide to go that route. Um, so yeah, stay tuned and have fun.